welcome to this video in this short video we would uh, try to understand the meaning of the avogad the features of the avogad with reference to the movement known as modernism this is a part of my lectures on modernism this is the fourth part of my lecture uh, the lecture series that would uh, be focusing on modernism and modern literature you can go to the i button of this video uh, above this particular screen and uh, you'll find over there the links to my other videos which are about modernism about various aspects of modernism and the literature of the late 19th century and early 20th century so let's continue with this term avogad now what is the avogad we ask this question we need to understand that this was the defining feature of what is known as the modernist art it was the feature that defines modernism and that's why the term modernism is directly related with avogad the origin of the word is french avogad and uh, it is coming from the military combats it uh, actually referred to the small group of soldiers who would be at the forefront when there is a combat when there is a warfare and uh, when there is war and uh, during warfare they would be standing at the forefront they would be facing the enemies and they would be the frontliners so to speak so they would be the most advanced among all the soldiers who are fighting in that battle and if you think of the meaning the literal meaning of the avogad it is advance guard you can say that in english and alternatively we have another term for this in english which is vanguard so vanguard and avogad are more or less the same and uh, in our understanding in the context of uh, for our understanding in the context of modernist literature modernist art we need to understand we need to consider that avogad refers to a small group of artists and authors who deliberately undertook to make it new if we use ezra pound's famous phrase modernism was all about making it new so breaking from the tradition going away from the convention was the call of the day for modernist writer a modernist painter and that's why they were the avogad and uh, many people say that they were avogadist that means they deliberately wanted to dissociate themselves from the mainstream so what were the features of the avogad primarily they violated the established conventions of representation in art and in so doing they ushered in new styles and forms in art they wanted to represent reality in a different way in fact many of them thought that it's not required to represent reality at all because art should represent art itself or to the extreme level in fact reality if you think of the extreme avogadro's thinking you will uh, un- you will be able to consider that they believed that reality represents art because art is so so superior to life so superior to reality so they in this way they challenge the very notion of representation conventionally we know that art represents reality for a conventionally realist writer of the 19th century or maybe before that in the 18th century when the novel was emerging for a realist writer art would be a kind of vehicle through which reality would uh, percolate and and come to the reader uh, sometimes art gets represented as uh, or art gets considered as as a as a mirror and you can think of the mirror and the lamp theory of mh abrams where the romantic artist would be uh, not the mirror but the emanator of meaning he would uh, generate all the meanings and uh, 
in comparison to that we in comparison with that we have uh, another theory of art which is the mirror theory that uh, the artist is like a mirror the work of art itself is like a mirror to the society which would reflect the society so uh, modernists were coming out of all these ideas in fact uh, many a time critics argue that in this way probably they were uh, going back to a romantic idea of art that uh, art where, where artist is the origin of everything but then again they challenge this notion uh, with the very ideology in modernism which we find in modernism uh, the ideology is that um, artist is uh, not a, a conscious uh, unified entity artist self is not unified in nature as you already know that uh, freudian psychoanalysis was already at work during this time during the time when uh, say there are movements like uh, surrealism or dadaism is coming Uh, these movements are coming during that uh, were, were coming during that time so freudian psychology was uh, influencing or freudian uh, psychoanalytic theories were influencing and you uh, go to my video on stream of consciousness to understand uh, the the impact that the contemporary psychological studies were having on uh, the development of art during this time so modernist challenge that uh, romantic notion of uh, the artist as the originator of everything as a unified self who would generate unified meaning uh, a coherent meaning so according to modernists artists should not generate coherent meaning and that's why it uh, a work of art would not give you coherence but it would give you a, a sense of disorder a sense of chaos to sometimes shock you uh, shock you out of your complacency so that would be the idea which you can associate with Bertolt Brecht's uh, famous epic theater or for that matter the rhythmical grumbling in the wasteland which uh, often people talk about right so they in this way they ushered in new styles and forms in art and uh, they were very self conscious and self referential they were referring to themselves as artists or the artwork would refer to itself as a form of art not as a form of a, a kind of something which is transparent in nature it would not showcase itself as a transparent thing now you will understand this if you compare the very idea of modernist art the very idea of avant-garde artists with uh, the avant-garde ideology of art with the uh, ideology which would which you would find in uh, realist writers okay so uh, a realist novel say for instance the novel of charles dickens now a novel of charles dickens would not represent the forms that itself is using or uh, the the narrator would not refer to himself as the narrator or a narrator who is narrating the story and in realism you would not find such references to itself right so a realist novel would not present itself as a novel as something that represents another thing which is not reality which is not real in the sense which is crafted so realism would not show its or showcase its craft craftsmanship which works behind it so a realist writer would never showcase the amount of efforts that the writer have put behind producing that novel pro producing that work but the modernists would do so in that way they were self conscious and in that way they were self referential they were conscious of themselves they were conscious of the very fact that they are doing something they are doing something with art this was the self consciousness that you will find in almost all the modernist writers and there is a difference between modern and modernism so for that you again i would request you to go to the description of this video or go to the uh, i switch or i key above given above the video screen and uh, see the links of the other videos that we have in fact if you go through the lecture series which is concerning uh, uh, which which concerns itself with modernist art and modernism and the development of modernism 
with reference to the world war, with reference to modernity, you will understand uh, all the meanings of these things in a better way. Right, anyways, so in this way, avant-gardeism is all about being self-conscious, being self-referential, and uh, they often projected themselves alienated from the traditional, from the conventional, and from the order, from the establishment. They were quite anti-establishment, anti -establishment so to speak, and they projected themselves like that. So they were different from the norm, different from the mass. Uh, you can think of the arguments given by the Frankfurt School of uh, critics like Adorno and Horkheimer and uh, then Walter Benjamin, another advocate of uh, new forms of art. And uh, in fact, you can study the debate that the Marxist critics were having over modernism. You can compare uh, Lukács' argument uh, with the arguments uh, given by, say, Bertolt Brecht or Walter Benjamin. And they are advocating avant-gardeism. They are advocating uh, the very fact that modernist artists need to be experimental. And in fact, Adorno argued that art gives a negative knowledge of reality. It doesn't reflect reality at all. It doesn't require to reflect reality at all. And Lukács is saying, no, this is bad, actually. A realist writer would reflect reality in totality. In, in this way, it would be able to represent the totality of human society. And in so doing, it would project the problems which work, which, which lie in, in human society. And thus would try to engage the audience critically, um, try to move the audience's mind so that they can change the social realities, the unevenness that's, that is prevalent in, in the social strata. Uh, they are Marxist thinkers, so they are, they were, are going to talk about the gaps between haves and have-nots. And they are going to talk about the economic deprivation, the commercial exploitation which goes in the society. So the class hierarchy, they would continuously attack that. And uh, on the other hand, uh, against this uh, argument produced by Jorge Lukács, uh, we have Adorno's argument that art gives a negative knowledge of reality. In fact, it doesn't reflect reality, it doesn't need to reflect reality because as it becomes esoteric, as it becomes uh, abstruse sometimes, this is an accusation against uh, the avant-garde notion of art, as it is very abstruse or very esoteric uh, at times, it tries to engage you critically, it tries to engage you in a different way. It is not giving you everything which is understandable very easily, which is comprehensible very easily. In this way, it is trying to nurture the critical faculties that everyone has inside himself or herself. Bertolt Brecht would uh, say that epic theatre would do this. So instead of uh, what he termed lyric theatre, we have epic theatre, the lyrical quality, the melodrama would be completely uh, robbed off or, or dispensed with when uh, dealing with theatrical practices. In fact, epic theatre would give the audience the necessary shocks which would not lull them to kind of complacency but uh, try to awaken them to a new reality and so that they can be more critical, they, they can be more uh, critical of what is going on in, in the society. So uh, all the techniques like stream of consciousness technique, interior monologues, then the movements which you would find like imagism, cubism, surrealism, futurism, dadaism, vorticism, impressionism, this is uh, the first uh, kind of modernist movement that emerged in the realm of painting and then moved on towards uh, expressionism gradually and then Cubism came and then surrealism. In this way, it went on and on. And uh, these were all very, very experimental movements which we find. So all these are associated with the avant-garde. So avant-garde is overtly modernist, challenging the traditional, challenging the conventional. If you have uh, questions, queries, please mail them to me. Uh, you can uh, definitely post them in the comment section. Uh, these are my references that we have used, that I have used to prepare this video and prepare this PowerPoint presentation. Thanks a lot for 
watching.